If you're going to be growing pumpkin, squash, or gourds, and you want to save seeds so that you can grow those same varieties in future seasons, there's something called toxic squash syndrome that you should be aware of. I'm going to talk about what that is and what you can do to prevent it. Toxic squash syndrome is an illness caused by consuming cucurbitacins that are poisonous to eat at high levels. So what are the symptoms? Essentially tummy trouble, but it can cause swelling in the pancreas, liver, gallbladder, and kidneys. But how will you know if a squash will make you sick? Luckily, it's pretty easy to tell. Squash with high levels of cucurbitacins will taste bitter. Don't swallow any bitter tasting bites or continue eating it. So what causes it? Cross-pollination. So let's talk about how to avoid it. Essentially, you just want to see which genus the varieties you're growing are in. The backs of your seed packet should say. If they don't, look it up and write it down on your seed packs for future reference. But if we look at the seed packets that I have here, we can see which genus each belongs to. I have a Pepo, a Machada, and a Maxima. And these seeds are ones that I saved from a grocery store squash. And because I am not even sure at all what variety it was, I can't really look it up. So if I grow these, I should just use them decoratively only. Even store-bought ones where you know what the variety is can be risky because you don't know how they were grown and how closely they were grown to other squash varieties. But back to the varieties you are sure about, I have these jack-o'-lantern pumpkin seeds that are pepo and this delicata squash, which is also a pepo. So if I wanted to grow both of these and save seeds, I shouldn't plant them together. The cross-pollination that could make you sick won't affect the current growing season squash, but if you save the seeds and they did cross and you planted saved seeds from either of them, they could give you toxic squash syndrome. But I could plant a pepo next to a maxima or a machada and it would be fine. If you've got more than one variety of each genus and you really wanted to save the seeds, you could try staggering your seed starting times so they don't flower at the same time. Or if you have the space, you could plant them far apart. You could plant one in the front yard or one in the backyard. But I think they really do need to be planted pretty far apart to avoid any kind of cross-pollination. And if you have a small growing area and you're really tapped for space, just don't save the seeds. It's not worth it to waste your time growing something that could make you sick. And squash seeds are relatively inexpensive, so you can just buy a new pack each year if you need to. Something else you could try is covering the flowers to try and avoid cross-pollination. I use these organza bags, and these are pepper plants since I don't have any flowering squash plants to show you right now, but it's the same concept. I wanted to save seeds for my peppers, but I want them to breed true. As far as I know, crossed peppers won't make you sick, but to keep the seeds true to the variety, placing an organza bag over the flowers and then hand pollinating them myself should prevent the cross pollination. And even if you do end up with crossed squash because you noticed it looks crossed, it's probably okay to eat as long as it isn't bitter. But remember, if it is bitter, spit it out, stop eating it, and don't save the seeds.